So um, yeah, this is the first chapter of the part uh, functional programming. And it's about functionals. Um, it started with a little citation um, of Bjarn Stroustrup. <laughs> Um, to become significantly more reliable, code must become more transparent. In particular, particular nested conditions and loops must be viewed with great suspicion. Complicated control flows confuse programmers. Messy code often hides bugs. So, um, yeah, I found myself with the <laughs> nested conditions and loops that have to be viewed with great suspicion. And... Um, when I saw that here apply and these functions are um, some functionals that you probably know already, I knew, okay, yes, I know them, but I didn't use them so often yet. So it's very good to get into this chapter and get to know more about them. <clears throat> and most of the chapter is about um, functionals from the package per. And the first Hadley is talking about is map. And map has two arguments. It has um, the first argument is a vector and the second is a function. And map basically just iterates over the elements of the vector and takes always one at a time and uses, this at the, uses these as an input for the function and returns then a list with all the outputs. <clears throat> and theoretically, if you just would write it as a for loop, um, you could also do that. And it's pre-allocating the um, space for the output. Um, but practically, map is actually written in C. And uh, base R equivalent of map would be L apply. So um, sometimes it's um, not really useful to have a list as an output. And that's why map comes with um, several sub functions, if I can call them like that. So um, the output would always be what the suffix to the map um, indicates. So we have a um, function that gives you logical output, integer, double, and um, characters. And I think this is uh, probably quite handy because usually um, I would prefer, or in many cases, I would probably prefer to just have a vector instead of a list as an output. Um, then you can, if you don't have a function uh, that is named as an input, you can also just create a function within the map. So you could write here, for example, a function of x um, is length unique x, and x would be then always um, like an element of this, uh, the first argument to map. So here you get basically what's the unique um, elements for each element in empty cars. <laughs> and there's a little shortcut. So you don't actually have to write this function um, for creating this anonymous function. You can also use this called twiddle in this case. And then you have to provide uh, here the dot x, which is actually this argument of map. So the first argument. Excuse me, what does that dot mean? Um, so dot x is actually the, um, the name of the first argument of map. So the first argument of map is dot x, the second is dot f. So it's not x and f, but it's dot x and dot, e dot f. Okay. So here we are actually, um, yeah. So the first argument of map is dot x. Yeah. And the second argument is dot map. Because I was confused while reading the chapter, I was seeing dot x and dot map okay, and dot f. The, yeah. Okay. So yeah, those are the names of the first, uh, the two arguments to map dot x and dot f. So in which case do we use dot f? Um, dot f, I mean, you could say dot f um, equals this part so that you just name the argument. Okay. Um, otherwise, I don't know if you re really like use, in, use this in another expression. Okay. I cannot really think of anything. So it's basically, I mean, it's just the, the name of the argument. Yeah. And they use dot x and dot f to, um, I think he's coming to that uh, later in the chapter, um, to not get confused when you have other functions. Often you have the first argument x, um, 
or other arguments and you can um, supply um, the arguments. So you can supply further arguments to this function um, afterwards. So you have the first argument uh, dot x, the second argument dot f, and then you can supply um, arguments to the function afterwards. And if you then have again an, an um, argument that's called x, then it would be sometimes confusing. So this okay. is why it's called dot x and dot f. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so there is one example where you um, uh, map basically um, one to three to the function of our uh, uniform distribution with n equals two. And if you um, provide this function, actually it's always doing the same thing. So it's uh, creating a normal uh, R uniform distribution um, and does that twice uh, for like the elements one, two, three and the output is captured in a list. So, um, yeah. so <laughs> I'm sorry, I have another dumb question. So here we have the, is it tilde sign as well here after the map? Mark so, and three. What is it after? This here? The one after. Uh, this one? Yes. Uh, this is here the uh, the twiddle. It's called twiddle. twiddle. Ah, okay, twiddle. So it's basically here, just uh, yeah, why don't we have dot two? In, like here we have that X. Um you mean here you have an X and here you have a two? Yeah, here we have dot X. And um, then have dot. Yeah, I think this is just saying that the first argument of the function should be the argument that's coming from this vector. And here it's basically um, saying that this function is just our unit two, but you do it three times. Okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, so actually none of the um, elements of that ve vector go into the R unit. It's just that it's iterating three times over this function. Um, okay, and then you can also use this map function to um, select elements. Um, he says this is actually useful when you're working with deeply nested lists. Um, and you can, for example, select them by name. So um, you would do this, for example, if you want to have as an output a double, um, you give the first element would be this list, the name of the list, um, X. I hope this will work now. <laughs> and if you want to say, you want all the elements that are called X in this list, you give a character um, X. And then, yeah, so you get one, four, eight, which are all the elements of the list that are called X. Um, you can also do this by um, position. So this would be X. And then if you want to have all in the first position, you just give the number one and it's giving you all of those. And then, um, you could also do it for both like the first element of the elements in the list that are called Y. So here you would then um, provide the vector Y and one. So it takes from, um, from all the elements that are called Y, the first element. Nope. <laughs> Am I wrong? I put a solution here. Yeah, I think okay. that's right. What's the, what's the difference? Oh, it wants a list. Uh, a ah, list. Uh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good that I put the solutions in there. <laughs> yep, then you get them. Okay, not a vector. You have to um, put a list because you also go basically deeper into a list, I guess. 
Um, yeah, if the component doesn't exist, uh, like this, for example, you will get an error. What happens? And... Sorry? No, OK. Um, what happens if you change to map function, like? Like I rather the map double. Yeah, is there anything in there that was not a double? I, I can't see that thing. Um yeah, here so there's a Z uh which is actually a character, but it's not present in the third um list of that list. Mm -hmm. what so, happened? Oh that's that's where we get this no. Yeah, okay. That's Sorry. Where, Sorry. Where we get the, the arrow, so um doesn't exist in all the uh, list elements, so you don't get it uh, get it out. Yeah. <clears throat> so um, here, the first case where we use map to extract x. Do you think of any other ways we can extract x rather than using this map? Um, In R. I guess that you can also go into the list and then use the dollar or something, right? Or the um, the double. Yeah, some yeah, kind of I subsetting. Was, yeah. yeah, I was thinking about that. Yeah. OK, but I, I guess the advantage here is that, uh, especially here in this part, that you can go into the nested lists easier. Yeah. So Again, the same bit each place. Like it talked about using it with like JSONs and stuff, and you can yeah. see it. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. So you can also give a default if there is something not present, then you say default, uh, it should default to NA. Um, actually, I don't know. Then it's giving you uh, NA for everything, even though there are two Zs here. Um, yeah, don't really know why that happens, but I guess NA is like, how was it sticky? So it's just contagious. Huh. I don't, I feel like in the book it had that doing something though. So why? I might be remembering it wrong. Uh, oh yeah, here it is. Doing things. <laughs> yeah, which is the same. As you have. So maybe this is a thing in Learner, so no, I don't know. Uh, yeah, maybe. Don't know mine. Thingy here. Um, I just run this and then run this. Yeah, in our studio, it also gives me E and an A. So maybe this is just the oh, Learner. Yeah, okay, cool. Good to know. I didn't <laughs> didn't see that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. And then you can also pass um further arguments, um, as I already mentioned before, um with like dot dot dot. So any other arguments that are needed by the function that you provide, you can just provide after the function. But um, the things that then uh, it's only iterating over the first vector. If you provide in another argument the second vector, it will take the whole vector as an argument and not iterate over this vector. Um, there is another function we will get to later that actually does then also iterate over um, other vectors. Um, da -da -da. <laughs> Um, excuse, please. Can you explain the picture again? Yeah, I'm a little bit confused. Okay. Um, so the before you had the the map function with just the first argument. So actually, map just has these two arguments. The first is a vector. The second is a function. Yes. But is if this function has uh, more arguments than just the one that will come from this vector, mm -hmm. we provide them um, after the function. Okay. Um, so um, maybe I have something in here. Um, so here we have this function, which is a function of x and y. Um, and it's just 
adding yeah. x adding. plus y and you have this x mm -hmm. um, and then you could provide it in inside the function so so here it's just um an, an argument uh, like you make an anonymous function again inside of map mm -hmm. and you give the first argument x should be taken from the vector x and the second argument should be um this uh our unit one um and then so there's also actually a difference if you do it like this then this second argument will be um, executed every time the function is called. So uh, for each um, output, you will get a different output for this um, R unit. But you also have the possibility to just give it into map as an additional argument, yes. like here. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. But then, um, then it's only called once when you call the map function, and uh, always. So you iterate over X, but this will be then the same. So you get the same output here. Yeah. And this would be then, I don't know if you have an argument for the function that has to be a vector. I don't know, I cannot really think of an example, but then you could also do that. And the vector will be taken as an argument for mm -hmm. each iteration. Okay, okay cool. Um, okay, yeah. He also says that here, the argument names you should always um, actually put them if you add more arguments um, to avoid any confusions. And here's also again, sorry, no. Okay, here's um, again, it was written about the dot X and dot F, the two names for the arguments of map. Um, that is basically just to avoid mixing up with other um, names for, with the names of the other functions that might also be X or, or F. <clears throat> yeah, so varying another argument, he put that already here. There's no direct way, but you can use an anonymous function. Um, but actually you can also then use one of the functions that come later in the map variants. Um, and how you would do that uh, with this anonymous function would be, um, so this, here is like the vector that you provide um, as trims. And then you have function of trim is the mean of um, X and trim is trim. So trim would be then coming from here and X would be coming from here, I guess. I think, I mean, this is somehow confusing um, but the way that is described later with the map variance is much easier. So I think this is not where we should um, get hold up <laughs> to, to understand the complicated way if there's an easier way. Um, okay, so that's already the exercises for the first part. Um, do you have any um, exercises that you want to go through because um, Maybe it makes sense to not go through through all of them right now. Anybody has a special exercise that they want to go through? I didn't totally get like I I understood how the exercise worked. Um, sorry if you can't hear me, my internet connection is very bad today. But I didn't quite get why, for example, run if doesn't get called when you pass it as the function why you have to make it anonymous like i get the concept that it gets converted into a function the as mapper um, um I, I assume from reading the, the explanation of as mapper mm. but yeah i wasn't totally sure why why it doesn't get called multiple times like does it get does it get called before it gets put into the mapper function the, um, the random. So you mean from the example uh, from where was it? From more up from this one? No. I think there was somewhere right. Oops. Uh, basically, exercise two. Um, the map one to three run if two, and then map one to three run if two yeah. does not. These two here that they don't give the same thing. You mean? 
Yeah, I wasn't totally sure why the second one does not get, does it just not get evaluated each time? And it gets yeah, I think so. Now it's I think rather than a I think this is uh, more like the the basically the environment question here. So because this is called and then um, I guess this is executed once and then it's just taking like um, linking it to to I don't know the name of this argument and always accessing the same thing. Whereas here you have again the function and it's always called when a function is called and the function is called like several times. I, I think that this is the explanation. Yeah, that kind of makes it clearer. Yeah, I so this one is just called once. So yeah. it also just calls once this one, and this one is called here like four times. So it also calls then this again four times. <laughs> At least that's what I yeah. put together in my head. <laughs> yeah, thinking of it like, like the lazy evaluation thing, like basically it evaluates and then whereas with the upper one with the anonymous function it has to evaluate because it has to rebuild the function again yeah yeah, yeah exactly yeah that, that was all okay <laughs> i think actually this is also in this uh, this exercise right that's what you meant probably <laughs> 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 yeah um so we got this one now i think <laughs> Um, I kind of also like the third um, exercise. Um, use the appropriate map function to compute the standard deviation of every column in a numeric data frame. So we have here this data frame. Um, anybody wants to go? It's it's what map map uh, not int. Is it int? I guess it would be double. Double, yeah, map double and then SD. DFSD. Uh, hmm? DFSD, yeah. I guess it's that. Okay. <laughs> cool. <laughs> um, then compute the standard deviation of every numeric column in a mixed data frame. It says you have to do it in two steps. Um, anybody? <laughs> oh, I had to cheat for this one because I couldn't think of the way you would do it in the map format. So I, I know the answer for this one, but I had to like Google it because I was like, <laughs> it makes sense to me. Okay. Um, do you want to go anyways? Yeah. So the, first check step, again. <laughs> <laughs> the first step is you get a vector of logicals. Um, it with yeah. is numeric, so like your so I don't know. map map logical. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Oh. Is numeric. And then and make a vector. I type this. <laughs> sure. And then you would map. Um, I don't know. You, so you have to make this as a uh, yep as a like selector vector. So, oh no, and then um, uh, and then you would use the F um, map. Google df and then df2, something like that. Mm. Or just uh, what does this give me? Does it give me three? Should give you a vector of length, uh, probably what, three? Yeah, then this should work. And then it asks the standard deviation. Oh. Nope. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna cheat here. Yeah, I think I 
Mm. Yeah, I did the same. Oh, so there, you did the DF, time. you did the subsetting of the first bit as well. Yeah, I just put it in one line. Um, yeah, but it was the same. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it looked like the same. <laughs> okay. Um, do you want to go through more exercises or continue first with the rest of the chapter? Uh, continue the chapter, maybe? Just because yeah. there's mm -hmm. 30 seconds it would be too long up, but uh, otherwise. Okay, so then we get to the map variants. Um, in total, there are 23 map variants. So we already saw some with the map logical and map um, double and so on. And there's um, other variants of these five families, as to say. So um, there's modify, which will give you the same output type as input. Um, there is map two, with which you can iterate over two inputs. So then it's like you get two vectors as an input and iterate over both. Um, you can iterate with an index using IMAP. Um, you can return nothing with walk and you can iterate over any number of inputs with PMAP. And those are basically also um, working with, for example, so you can also use map two with the suffix for um, logical to get a logical um, atomic vector out there. Or you can also use modify, modify two to have two arguments as an input and so on. So you can basically combine them uh, to get then in the end to these 23 variants. I do, I have to say, oh, I think this is such a, oh, well, to me, like such a perverse way of doing it, like having that many functions, like <laughs> just throw some of them in an argument. I would so much rather have to, uh, you know, like give an argument to say whatever it is, uh, you know, what type of vector it is rather than having to, I know you don't have to remember them and like there's some logic to how they're named, but this to me is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, it's a lot of functions, but um, yeah, I kind of like it. It's like, yeah, okay. I remember for two arguments, I have to put the two. So, <laughs> so I, guess it, I think this is the whole idea of functional programming, right? That you have functions <laughs> yeah many functions <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah rather than to have like object oriented to concern about the object and some sort of like inheritance so that is i think the downside also from object oriented where you have you need to have object with their i mean uh yeah so i think <laughs> this one you we have to cope with functional program you have or basically functions <laughs> yeah, I just thought it was interesting, like with the V apply, that apply, whatever, how um, <laughs> there was that criticism that like it's a bit verbose because you have this extra argument which says like whether your, what your input uh, or what your output should be or what your input should be, I can't remember which one. And to me, that feels like a lot. Yeah. Um, a lot easier than remembering, even though there's not that much to remember, but than remembering mm. the different ones. <laughs> Yeah, maybe it's also a bit like um, you have to get used to it. And it's yeah, yeah and personal preference things. for sure. Yeah, all these functions sometimes are difficult <laughs> to remember. I just it's just Google my friend. I mean, <laughs> yeah, difficult to remember all of this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so um, I'm gonna explain the different um, types of this function. Um, so modify was that you get the same type of output as you have as the input. Um, so if you have like this data frame um, with x and y, three numbers, and you want to um, just multiply each x by two, you could do it with map, but the output would be this list. But when you use modify, um, you actually get the same output, but in a data frame. So if you just want to keep the data frame structure, um, you can use modify and get to the, the results that you want. 
Um, then map two is the function where you can iterate over two um, vectors. So as you remember from before with the normal map, if you have another vector as an argument, uh, it will be passed to the function, but it stays as this vector. But with map two, um, you pass two vectors as arguments before the function. And um, each time the function is called, it will iterate over both vectors. Um, yeah. Then the walk functions actually don't give you any output. And that comes in handy uh, if you use functions like cat or also um, like write CSV. So these functions that don't really have an, um, an output, but they are called for their side effects, he says. <laughs> so here um, he has this, this little function which will cut um, welcome and then X uh, and a new line and these two names. If you would call it with map, you will get the, um, the cut. So the, it will be written on your, um, on your terminal, but you will also get the output of the function, which is null. So it doesn't, it's not an output, but it is there. So it's null. And with walk, um, you basically just get what you want here. The two text strings are um, printed. Um, then with the IMAP uh, family, you can iterate over values and indices. So um, I put here an example uh, with the vector um, with some numbers, and then I gave some names to the vector, uh, like spider and cat and human pirate. Um, and I wanted to basically make this little, um, uh, these little sentences. So paste um, A and then Y would then be the name of the element of the uh, first argument has, this would be then X, the actual um, element in the vector and then legs. So a spider has eight legs would be here A, spider is the name, um, has X is the number. Um, and you can also do this. So I just unnamed the vector again with the indices. So then it would be number one has eight legs. So one would be the, the index of the first element and then X is the actually actual value of this element. So this would be useful to, for um, constructing labels um, or work with the values along with their position. Um, <clears throat> then we have PMAP. And with PMAP, you can um, have any number of inputs. So this is actually, so if you have more than two, you would use PMAP. Um, this would be um, useful, um, oh wait, so for PMAP, you have to then pass the arguments as a list. And you could do this, for example, just create this list where you have the first element of the list is N, then minimum and maximum, and then pass these parameters to the RUNIF, um, and you would get the output. So for the first uh, row, basically, those are the three arguments that will be passed. So n is one, we have a minimum of zero and maximum of one. So you just get one value between zero and one. And the second line um, will be two values between 10 and 100 and the third um, three between 100 and 1000. So this, um, yeah, I guess it's useful if you have functions with several arguments and you want to pass uh, like the, the, the other arguments depending on the first argument and so on. Okay, so this is again exercises. Um, here it asks to explain the results of modified cars. I'm just gonna run. So the difference between modify, oh, uh, modify cars and empty uh, map cars. Um, so if you run modify cars one, uh, it actually gives you uh, the first row in then all the rows of this data frame. And uh, this is because uh, 
modify keeps the structure. So it gives you the same uh, type of uh, output as you had input. And it's also keeping the structure. So it's not just giving you then the data frame of one row, but it gives you the data frame where every row is uh, the same value. Whereas if you use map, you just get basically the first uh, row here. Or is it, ah, no, it's the first, it's a list, right? So it's the first element of each um, list element. Or? Hmm. <laughs> no, it has to be a data frame. I'm confused now. Yeah, but it's, uh, yeah, the first element um, of each column. Does it always give you back the same dimensions? Is that what it's doing as well? The modify? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, at least that's what I got from this example. So this uh, this data frame is uh, actually the same dimensions as the original empty cars. I just printed ahead here. Um, Okay, rewrite the following code to use iWalk. Um, I'm not sure if we have enough time to go through all of the exercises. Maybe we continue again, and if we have um, time, we can go back to the exercises. Um, or, or does anybody have a specific one that you want to go through now? I guess not. <laughs> then let's go on. Um, yeah, so then there's uh, other basically function families in this per um, package, for example, the reduce family. And reduce, what that does is, um, I find it a bit like, it was a bit complicated for me in the beginning to wrap my head around it, but it basically calls the function always on the first two elements of the vector. And then it's taking the output of these two elements and uses it again as an element and takes the next element of the vector as the second um, argument and so on until it's gone through all the vector. Um, so I have here an example with just gene names and um, made a list with four uh, list entries sampled uh, over this vector. So I have 15 elements in each list element. And I want to get the intersect out of that. And you could just do like um, intersect always the outcome of the first and then intersect the next element to get the overall intersect of all the list um, entries. But you can do that in one line with the reduce function. So this basically does the same as this code here. So you use it again with two arguments. The first will be like this thing that you iterate over and then the function and you get the same output. Um, you can also use it with other functions. For example, union then gives just um, all that are basically in, in the whole list. Um, yes, <laughs> so difficult. Lee, can you come in again explain? <laughs> it's difficult to understand. Um, how, how it works? Yeah. Um, uh, how to explain better? Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, basically from the picture, I want to see yeah uh, the way you explain from the picture. Yeah, so the function here is called, mm -hmm. first time is uh, called here. Yes. So the function is grabbing the first two elements of the vector. Yes. And then it's, so if you use the intersect function, it takes the intersect of these two elements. Mm. And then you get an output, um, which will be probably smaller and will be used as the first argument again in this function. Okay. And the second is then the next argument of the vector. Mm -hmm. All right. So you see then the intersect of the intersect of this with this element. Mm -hmm. And then you get the intersect of the intersect of 
these two, which is the intersect of these two in this element with this element. So what are the use cases? When do we, I mean, when is this useful? <laughs> Um, I can imagine I, it a, yeah. a running sum, for example, a running sum of something. In my, my head, I'm like, useful, but maybe we could use that to create a Fibonacci series. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's how I imagine. Yeah. I think it's yeah. quite, I, I quite often find that I need to be like, I need to know which elements are in all of these lists yeah. uh, like what's the common ground or like or vice versa like what isn't in all of these lists kind of thing I think that comes yeah. up for me quite a lot yeah I mean for me it also comes up quite a lot if I have like several lists of uh, genes in my case that are somehow different in different um, conditions um, but I want to know which of those genes are actually different in all of the conditions and um, then I, I would use that Okay. Um, there's also the function accumulate, um, which it basically it does the same as reduce, but it gives you the output of, of every iteration. So this would be the output of the first iter iteration. If you assign that, if you assign that, does that then like you access it by like the first, it's then like a list of those things effectively. Yeah. 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 Yeah, exactly. cool. So I think this would actually be the first entry of the vector. Um, this would be then the output of intersect of the first with the second. Then this would be the output of intersect with the this and the third, and this the output of intersect with this and the fourth element. So it basically gives you all the steps um, of the function. Um, yeah, then uh, if the x that you provide is of length one or zero, um, the reduce function either returns the input value or asks for an initial value, um, I would say it's called. So if you, um, I mean, if you just have one uh, value here, um, the function will already have a problem here, um, but this apparently it's the handles by just giving you back this first value. But if you have no value, um, it asks for an initial value. And then you can um, say you, oops, you give an initial value. And um, so it makes probably sense to give, yeah, depending on what, on what your output would be. Um, so if you have an addition, so if you just have reduce um, a vector of numbers, and the function is just a plus, for example, and you don't have anything in there, it would be good to have a zero as the initial value and then the output would be just zero. Okay, are there any more questions to that part? Um, go on. The next chapter is about predicate functionals. Um, and here a predicate is a function that returns a single true or false, um, like is character is null or all. And we say a predicate matches a vector if it returns true. Um, yeah, so I guess you all know these like is character or is null. And per also has a couple of those, um, which can probably be quite handy. So here we just have um, a data frame with two columns, um, each with three double um, doubles. And um, then we have a list of uh, functions. And we uh, basically um, perform a function on empty card to create a uh, different, yeah, to change the AM uh, column basically to a factor, factor. And I think actually that's all that this, uh, this block does just for um, setup to these examples. Um, so there's, uh, for example, sum, 
which will look in the empty cars and return true if um, any of the columns are of type double in this case, or if any of the type uh, if any of the columns are of type logical. So if I run this, I would expect if we check the head empty cars. Um, yeah, so we have actually almost just doubles and then this one is now a factor and yeah, that's it. So the output for this line is true because there are some in there that are double, but the output for this one is false because none of them match to doubles. So there's not some that are double. So the, the um, logic is quite clear actually. All right, I have a quick question. I'll be very fast. I'm sure it's in the chapter. How is it different from the base any function? Um, I'm not sure if it's in the chapter actually. It was, it is. It's to do with the speed of it because with wow. some, the first time it reaches any that are true, it will evaluate as mm -hmm. true. Um, whereas any will go through everything and same with every the first time it comes something that's false it will stop and it will say it's false so it's slightly uh, optimized yeah okay <laughs> thank you <laughs> um yeah so every is then exactly how you said if um, every column is double it will give uh true but the first one it hits that isn't a double then it returns false um so we have false for this one because we have a factor in there and the day df that was just uh, numbers um, returns true because all of them are double. Um, then there is detect and detect index, um, which, ooh, what did that do again? <laughs> I guess it, yeah, it detects if there is uh, something in there that is a factor or the detect index basically, and it also returns this, I think, and the detect index gives you the index of the um, column that is factor. Yeah, so the first one returns the whole column that is factor, and the second one just gives you the index. And then there's also keep and discard, which basically will keep the column that is factor or discard everything that is double in this case. So we would just get the, this factor um, column in both because once we keep it and once we discard everything, it's double. Yeah. So handy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, what's this? Um, uh, ah, yeah, there is also the map if or modify if. Uh, which is also quite handy. So it will uh, map the columns of the data frame if they are numeric to the function mean. So this is, I think, came up in one of the exercises before where we had to use two steps, but you can actually also just do it in one step with the map if. So the map if will check if the columns are numeric and then just return the mean on this, um, on these columns and keep the character column here, for example. And modify will, yeah, modify so it keeps the structure of the, so the three um, elements here. And then you can combine it with keep uh, to just keep those two that are numeric. Okay, then we have some more exercises. Um, so actually for um, the last part, I didn't go too much into it because he said that um, the functionals, the rest of the functionals that there are in base R um, and don't have any equivalent to per are mostly useful for mathematics and statistics and not so useful for data analysis. Um, so I just skipped that. So if you want, we can go through some more exercises. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Yay. <laughs> um, so here is one more. Why isn't an is an A a predicate function? Um, what base R function is closest to being a predicate version of is an A? 
So if we go through this, I have it in there twice. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I don't need this twice. Uh, is an A will return a vector of uh, false, 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 true. Um, and we learned about predicate functions that they only return either like one true or one false. Yeah. yeah. Do you know um, what would be the... Isn't there an any na in base r? Yeah, I think it's... Is it any... Yeah, I think it's this one that would be then probably closest. Yeah. So I guess we could say this um, is a predicate function then. <laughs> Um, then here we have simple reduce has a problem when x is length zero or one. Describe the source of the problem and how you might go about fixing it. So the reduce function, simple reduce, he also puts like um, this would be basically how you write it in R, the reduce function, which is also written in C, I guess. Um, and we saw for the reduce function, it has a problem if the vector is length one or zero. I think if it's one, then it will just give this as an output and zero, it asks for an initial value. Yeah, uh, it's like in, in the for loop, you've got in the function, it's going for a sequence that starts at two. So if you have one or zero, it will go, I can't remember with that, whether it will go backwards or whether it will just be fail. Yeah, um, but it won't work how you how it feels like it should work. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't quite figure out how you would do it. Um, I thought maybe you just give an error. <laughs> but I guess there's also a way to uh... <laughs> write a different function. Um... Write a different function. <laughs> do better. Yeah. <laughs> I guess you could change the input to seek to be based, like um, when you do seek rather than starting with two, you could base it on like length minus whatever maybe, or. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or put in uh, if condition. Yeah, and if condition to, stop to check for it. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, so we have some ideas. <laughs> I think if we would sit down, we would be able to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I think if I were to do this function, I would, yeah, put a warning because it shouldn't work on the, on those cases, right? Yeah. Want warning or return it, have it do as the, the, the reduce does return the thing when it's length one and then otherwise error out. Yeah, yeah. I guess that would make sense. Cool. Um, implement the span. So this one took me quite a while. Maybe, um, I don't know if we should go through it. Implement the span function from Haskell, given a list x and the predicate function f span x um, of x and f returns the location of the longest sequential run of elements where the predicate is true. Um, Ooh. <laughs> get on that. Do you want to still work on it or should I spoil it you? <laughs> Ooh. Oh my gosh. Yeah, go ahead, Joss. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, there's so many things that I don't really. Oh. <laughs> Copy, paste. Um, and I'm also not sure if, I, I guess there's probably a more elegant way than the one that I did because I again used some uh, for loops in there and stuff. Um, yeah, so I have this uh, data frame and then I have the span function x of f. Um, I have to <laughs> get through it again. Look for the longest sequential run of elements. Oh, predicate is true. Yeah. 
So I said out uh, would be map logical first of X and F. And then um, have this as a numeric and then pipe it into this RLE function, um, which I it's forgot again. What length is what RLE stands for? What do you what say? Length encoding. Run length encoding. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> It's used in genomic data a lot, actually, run length encoding. Ah, OK. Ah, yeah, and then, it, yeah, this function looks like uh, what are the, the like, longest, like the, the runs of yeah. sequential values in there, right? Um, and then, yeah, I look for the maximum that's uh, here in the out that comes basically out of this function. Um, and then I said a span would be then, oh God. <laughs> I should have made notes. <laughs> um, yeah, so in this out true, because it could be that there are several in there that have the same like length. Um, if, um, it's not true, then, no, oh my god, I'm very confused with my own code now. <laughs> um, Yeah, so I guess there's a more, might be a more elegant way than what I did here, because I already get confused with it. And I guess anybody else will get confused with it now. Um, they warned you against for loops. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess I should go into this again, um, but it works. <laughs> so in this case, actually it's, uh, um, no, this cannot be true. So it worked in my R studio. <laughs> Um, yeah, I should go into this again. <laughs> that looks really hard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now to go do it. <laughs> um, okay, it's already half past. Um, do you want to go through more exercises or you have to run? Uh, personally, I have to run. Um, but thank you so much. Uh, it was really good. I really, I thought it was really, really well done. Thank you. <laughs> thank um, you. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> okay. That was really great. Anne. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay. Nice you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that was great. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Um, thank you very much. Hard work down later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so see you next week. See you next week, guys. Bye. Yeah. Bye.